Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing the best niche fragrances for fall 2022. And for the record, yes, I am a summer loving Florida girl, but I love fall fragrances. They're usually very vanilla, warm, cozy. They kind of put you in the mood for the holidays, but there's usually such a small window when I can really wear them and enjoy them that I don't get as much use out of these fragrances as some of the others in my collection, but it just makes them even more special to me. I could not narrow down my list to top 10. I basically went through my entire fragrance collection and just pulled out all of the best niche fragrances. And I am planning to follow up today's video with a best designer fragrances for fall. So be on the lookout for that as well. Since I have so many fragrances here to talk about, I am gonna move through each of these a little bit quicker than I usually do. I wanna begin with a new discovery for me. and I don't think this is a new fragrance. I remember seeing it a few years ago and I guess it disappeared and then they brought it back again this year in a new bottle. It's from Killian, it's Princess Eau de Parfum. On the bottle it says, I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess. And this is truly a princess fragrance. I had somebody reach out to me recently and they asked for fall fragrance recommendations that don't smell like bark or they don't smell like a fireplace. I completely understand we are on the same page. If you like something that's a little bit sweeter, more of a warm gourmand fragrance, I think you will really like this. Keynotes include green tea, ginger, and marshmallow, but I really pick up on the marshmallow. Not so much the ginger, a little green tea, which gives it a very unique scent. Oh, it's so beautiful. If you like sweet fragrances, if you like something that's a bit yummy, you will love this. But it's not too sweet. There's enough going on that it kind of balances out the sugar. I discovered it on a recent trip to Sephora. I was just smelling all of the new fragrances and this was love at first sniff. Sometimes when you know, you know, you don't really have to think too much about it. It's definitely my style. It's the type of fragrance that I love to wear. And it's not so bold and powerful that I think it's exclusive to evenings, weekends, special occasions, date nights. I think you could wear this every single day could be just an easy grab and go for fall. When I first spritz the fragrance, I can smell the bite from the ginger, but then as it dries down, it's a little bit powdery, just a little bit, a little musky, and you're really just left with this dreamy, kind of creamy cloud of green tea and marshmallow. So if that sounds delicious to you, I think you will love Princess. This is another recent addition to my fragrance collection, Awake by Acro. I received so many recommendations from you to try this fragrance and you were right, you usually are. It smells like that first cup of bold espresso in the morning. It gives you a jolt whenever you smell this fragrance. One of the most unique fragrances I have ever smelled. If you love coffee, you have got to try this but it's very wearable. It's almost too strong, so as much as I love this on its own, I actually think it is perfect when layered with Vanilla Woods from The Seven Virtues or any sweet vanilla fragrance, whatever your favorite is, you are the barista. But the reason this combination works so well together is the Vanilla Woods is a very simple, straightforward, slightly sweet vanilla doesn't overcomplicate the fragrance because Awake already has enough going on. It's truly as if you're adding milk and sugar to your latte. Awake has keynotes of Balkan Santos coffee, green cardamom, Italian lemon, and Haitian vetiver. So on its own, it has a bit of a kick. There's a little bitterness from the coffee notes, a bit of earthiness. It is a little bit woody, earthy. There's also some sweetness. It's more of a syrupy sweetness. But if you don't like your coffee extra bold, then I think you can customize and go in with the Vanilla Woods. So I would probably do one or two spritzes of Awake and then, depending on how much fragrance you spray, and then three or four Vanilla Woods. Maybe a one to two part ratio. It just adds something special. This makes the fragrance perfect. 
You're not gonna smell like you just got off your shift at Starbucks. It truly smells elevated. Individually, I love both of these fragrances. I think Vanilla Woods is a staple in any fragrance collection because you can layer it with just about anything. If you love vanilla, you need Vanilla Woods in your life. It just adds so much versatility to all of your fragrances. And in this case, I think it lends a softness, a sweetness, a femininity to Awake. Maybe a little something that was missing before. This is my secret combination for fall. The combination is divine. If you have not tried Love Fest Burning Cherry 48 from Kaoli yet, where have you been? This is one of the hottest new launches for good reason. This smells like fall in a bottle, like a crisp fall evening. It has burning cherry, raspberry, praline, palo santo, guayac wood, and patchouli. Initially, I heard a lot of comparisons between Burning Cherry and Tom Ford Lost Cherry, but it really is not a dupe. They are so different. Initially, I do smell some similarities between the two. You get a little sweetness, a little bite, a little cherry. But as it dries down, Love Fest is a lot smokier, earthier. It's not as vanilla dominant and really not as cherry dominant, I would say, as Lost Cherry, one of my all-time favorite fragrances. So if you've never been a fan of Lost Cherry, I still think it's worth looking into. I kind of want to throw on plaid and wrap a scarf around my neck and go hiking in the woods or go camping. It just gets me excited for fall, gets me excited to wear my fall fragrances. And I think this is Kaoli's best fall fragrance. I prefer Love Fest to the Invite Only that they launched last year. Both beautiful, but I think Love Fest is a little bit more perfect. Invite Only is great when you layer it with the vanilla. With Love Fest, I think either or. You could definitely wear this alone. Peregrina from Thamine London is a hidden gem. I recently talked about this in my last Vanillas video. If you love vanilla fragrances, I will link it down below. Check it out. It's part two, best vanillas. I discovered Peregrina because I was sent a sample and it blew me away and I could not understand how I had not heard people talking about this fragrance before because it is special. It's a princess fragrance. It's sweet, kind of a candied rose. Keynotes include damask rose, gardenia, jasmine, lily of the valley, caramel, vanilla, amber, myrrh, ylang ylang, amber, powdery notes, and white musk. It basically checks all of the boxes of the notes I usually love in fragrance. I love gardenia. It's one of my favorite floral notes because it's nice and creamy. It has vanilla, amber, caramel. So it's delicious. And it's a bit bolder, which is why I think it is so perfect for fall winter. It's a little bit warm and sensual. This to me smells like a special occasion a weekend, evening, night out, or just every day if you want to treat yourself and, you know, wear your best fragrance because you want to smell it on yourself. But I just picture getting dressed up whenever I smell this. Also, if you love Roses Vigny from Mansara, I think you would love this. Peregrina isn't quite as sweet and it feels a little bit more elevated in my opinion but very comparable. Usually when I'm talking about Misencier fragrances, it's either For Your Love or a lot of times Trey Cher, one of my favorites, but I have a new one to introduce you to. This is Sweet Praline. Just as it sounds, it is a delicious gourmand with sweet praline notes. It's like a very elevated candy. Both of these are beautiful for fall winter. Trey Cher smells like wrapping yourself in a cashmere blanket or receiving a giant bear hug from somebody you love. Keynotes include orange blossom, sea notes, amber, jasmine, bourbon vanilla, and Australian sandalwood. It's so elegant, slightly powdery, and I think this would make an incredible signature scent. I would wear this every single day. Every day, any occasion, and never get sick of it. It's very relaxing. Maybe it's the C notes that make it so relaxing. It's like aromatherapy. I don't know how, but they have just captured the feeling of being cozy on the couch, wrapped in warm blankets straight from the dryer, snuggled up with somebody you love. 
It's a very comforting fragrance. Sweet Praline has keynotes of raspberry, jasmine sandback, incense, benzoin, and broxen and papyrus. This has a bit of a kick to it. I think it would be perfect for evening, date night. It's very sensual, a very sexy fragrance, probably because of the incense. It's a little bit moodier, a little bit earthy, but it does have almost a syrupy sweetness right away, which I don't love, but thankfully it dissipates and it becomes more of a softer sweetness. Just a beautiful gourmand fragrance, like fall in a bottle. Dear Polly, I must apologize for how I felt about you when we first met. This is a fragrance that has grown on me. And if I can, I'm going to try to find my first impression of this fragrance. And I think what happened was that it ha was built up so much and so many people said it was their favorite. It was so unique. It, it smells like Baccarat Rouge 540. I don't know how they got that. There was too much outside noise and it ruined my initial experience with Dear Polly because... It's not a Baccarat Rouge 540, far from it. I would say this is the perfect cool girl, kind of chic fashionista, casual everyday perfume. It is very unique and it smells like tea. So if you love the scent of tea or if you like tea fragrances, I highly recommend checking out Dear Polly. Keynotes include bergamot, apple, black tea, black amber, musk, and oak moss. It took rediscovering this fragrance recently for me to truly appreciate it and fall in love with Dear Polly. It's so nice. It's so beautiful. I don't know what I smell now that I couldn't at first. And of course, anytime I'm doing first impressions or unboxings, I'm usually smelling so many different fragrances that it can be difficult to form a genuine opinion. I get that initial burst of the bergamot and apple, and then it dries down to just a very pretty black tea perfume. Another magical tea forward fragrance for fall winter is Platinum 22 by Floris London. I feel very bittersweet talking about this fragrance now since it was inspired by the Platinum Jubilee, which was celebrated not that long ago, 70 years on the throne for Queen Elizabeth II, who has since sadly passed away. I've been watching all of the coverage on the news and it's just very emotional. It gives me a much deeper appreciation of this fragrance. Keynotes include iris, lime, black currant, black tea, black pepper, violet leaf, clary sage, rose, cedar, tonka bean, amber, and musk. Fun fact about the fragrance, it was during the Diamond Jubilee celebration when the florist team was spending so much time in the Queen's Gardens for all of the celebrations, that's where they drew inspiration to create Platinum 22. So the notes can be found in the Queen's Gardens. It's so elegant, so sophisticated. It's a little powdery, definitely pick up on the black tea, the cardamom. And they wanted to give it a gourmand touch and I think they did so beautifully. It smells so balanced. It's just beautiful. It smells like a natural beauty, like straight from nature. It's as if you're walking the grounds at Windsor, having an afternoon stroll. Next, we have Gris Charnel from BDK. This fragrance needs zero introduction. It is so beloved and talked about and hyped up for a good reason. It is a beautiful fall-winter fragrance, and I have been waiting for this moment because I picked this up, I want to say it was early spring when I added this to my collection, and I just haven't been able to properly wear it consistently. I will say, if you love Gris Charnel, you will probably really love Platinum 22. They have some similarities. They're not exactly the same. I think you could wear them for the same occasion, but they definitely give off the same mood, the same vibe. There's a little bit of that cool spiciness. Keynotes include cardamom, fig, black tea, iris, bourbon vetiver, sandalwood, and tonka bean. I have yet to try the extra version of this fragrance. I feel so late to the party. Everybody's already moved on to the extra. But to me, this is very bold. I'm not sure I necessarily need something even bolder. Of course, I know it's not just the same fragrance, but more intense. I'm sure there are little tweaks and it's a different perfume. 
If you've tried the X-Tray, let me know. Do I have to splurge for the X-Tray or can I just settle for the original Gris Charnel? When I smell this fragrance, I cannot help but picture somebody wearing a parka. I don't know why. Or a parka or a ski suit. It just smells like the season. Like colder weather. It's very beautiful, very moody and sensual. And a unisex fragrance. I bet it would smell incredible layered with a vanilla perfume. But I think if you did layer this with a vanilla, you would basically come up with changing constants, which is also on my list. This also has cardamom, but it also has pimento, caramel, and salt, vanilla, tobacco, and cashmere. Changing constants was my first Penhaligon's fragrance, and it was an instant love for me. And it also has that same mood as BDK Platinum 22, where it's just elegant and it has that creamy, delicious vanilla dry down, which I love so much. It's so smooth, gives it a little bit more of a feminine touch. I think this would be beautiful anytime. Changing Constance isn't so bold and heavy that you can only wear it for evening. I think this would be a beautiful daytime fall fragrance. And then if you did want to kind of kick it up a notch, Minuit et Demi from Fragrance de Bois. It smells very similar, very comparable to Changing Constance, but much more in your face. I think you get more of the tobacco, the coffee. It's just a little bit deeper. Tribeca from Bond Number no. 9, New York. This is one of my all-time favorites, and I was thinking about it because I haven't worn this fragrance in a long time because it's been hot and summery and I think this is more of a fall winter fragrance but Tribeca feels like an old friend. We don't have to talk every day. We can go months without speaking and we just know it's, it's you and I. I love this fragrance and it's one of my favorite fragrances to wear because it's a head turner. It's sweet. It's spicy. And it is so in your face, unapologetic. This is main character energy. When you want to draw attention to yourself, that's the perfect time for Tribeca. One of the longest lasting fragrances in my collection and incredible projection. So if you're somebody who likes that beast mode type of perfume, check it out. Keynotes include cacao, hazelnut, jasmine sandback, cedar, caramel, and broxen and moss. Tribeca and Greenwich Village are my two favorite Bond fragrances. They're the only two fragrances from Bond I have in my collection. Both have incredible performance and I love them both. But Greenwich Village, I would say, is year-round. I really would not put that in a box. Like, this is for one season only. You can wear that anytime. Tribeca, on the other hand, it just feels like colder weather. And I love it. It's sassy, it has attitude, spiciness, and just enough sweetness. I think Tribeca would be perfect for a holiday party or a night out on the town, night out with the girls, just a festive occasion when you're kind of letting your hair down, you're getting dressed up, but you're out for a good time, Tribeca. I have another New York inspired fragrance here. This is from Fragrance de Bois. It's New York Fifth Avenue. This smells like sex in the city, like the fragrance that Carrie Bradshaw would wear as she was spending the day shopping and meeting up with the girls for lunch. Keynotes include rose, bergamot, caramel, violet, cashmere wood, vanilla, guayac wood, and musk. It's very rose dominant, but this is not your grandmother's rose. It is a very modern rose fragrance. It smells like a fashionista. Somebody who wears bold lipstick, has impeccable personal style, and is just very unique, cannot be replicated. And I would say the occasion is anytime and any place. I would not necessarily wear this for evenings or a date night or a weekend or a special event. I think this is that really sophisticated, very unique, everyday fragrance. I have two honorable mentions that I'm not even going to attempt to spray on the blotter card because I will have the headache from hell. I can already feel it creeping in. This is Blackberry Lily from The Seven Virtues. I believe I talked about this last year during my fall fragrance video. 
it's a beautiful blackberry lily fragrance. It's very straightforward. So if you're looking for something that's kind of simple, more casual, perfect for every single day, but leans more fall winter, this is a beautiful choice. It's a great fall floral fragrance and it's non offensive. You can kind of wear this anywhere to the gym, to the office, to school pickup, wherever you need to be and you will smell incredible. And then on the flip side of that, because this is maybe more casual, Angel Share by Killian. I thought about saving this for closer to the holidays because this is very festive, nostalgia. I have to take a sniff. This is very gourmand, like baked goods, buttered rum. I imagine if butterbeer existed, butterbeer from Harry Potter, it would taste the way Angel Share smells. It's a bit polarizing. I heard from a lot of people who also love this fragrance. I've heard from a lot of people who cannot stand it. It's a little bit too boozy or too heavy for them. I love it. To me, this is festive holidays, gathered around in the kitchen with family, eating leftovers and laughing while Christmas movies are playing. It's just a very nostalgic fragrance. And that completes my list of the best niche fragrances for fall. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I cannot wait to read all of your recommendations, so don't be stingy. No gatekeeping. You have to drop your favorites down in the comment section. I love looking up your recommendations. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.